which will be taken by Sri Ashok Kumar. Sri Ashok Kumar is an officer of 1993 batch of Indian Telecom Services Department of Telecommunication. He is presently working as Director of Wireless Access at NTI Grid. He has conceptualized, developed, and delivered three batches of 5G certification courses for central and state government officers. Prior to NTI, he was he has worked in UIDI that is Aadhaar project for seven years. He has worked in various roles in planning, procurement, and project monitoring of mobile wireless network. Sir. Yeah, thank you, Devendra ji, and uh, thank you for the introduction, and thank you, Sunil sir, for setting the tone and expectations, various expectations which all of us may have from 5G. So I'll start with basics: what 5G means to all of us. So the topic given is. introduction to 5g so these are the four topics i'll be trying to cover in the first session in the second session uh, we'll focus more on the use cases practical use cases particularly for northeast what are useful use cases which can be taken up so let us look at the 5g adoption and proliferation across the world what is the status as of now because that will give us an idea because technology comes and go many technology may not survive so the idea, this will give an idea that how fast we are going towards adoption of 5g so this particular graph shows that adoption of 5g is much much faster than 4g so for example uh, whatever time it took for 4g to reach 1 billion Uh, mark that is 100 crore subscription of 4G. 5G is taking two years less, so it is kind of two years faster compared to 4G. So that shows that adoption of 5G is very very fast. Uh, and this year itself in 2022, the 5G will cross that 1 billion mark which I was talking about. so this is a forecast so if you look at this forecast what it says that by 2027 total mobile connection across the globe will reach around 9.1 billion 900 plus crores of mobile connection out of that 4.4 billion will be of 5g so the orange color graph you can see the green one is 4g so what it shows that even in 2027 we'll have almost half 5g and half 4g and very small number of 2g and 3g connections so the 4g and 5g will coexist for very very long time uh, for example even 2g is actually coexisting along with 4g as of now now so a lot of connections are still there our operators will uh, tell that so 4g will coexist because it's not going to i mean uh, go away on on the day one it takes very very long time to completely migrate to 5g so with this introduction let me talk about uh, what are different 5g usage scenarios broad usage scenarios and what are the key capabilities of 5g which will enable these uses so correlation between the key performance parameter of 5g and their use cases so all of us know and sunil sir also pointed out that who sets the requirement or vision for a technology so in case of telecom so we call it imt international mobile telecommunications so the itu international telecommunication union sets the vision of a technology for example in case of 5g they had set their vision in year 2015 itself and once those vision is set all the sdo standard developing organizations across the globe they are free to develop technology specification and okay. they submit it to it for approval in case of 5g 3g pp is a kind of global standard making organizations which is making standard of mobile technology starting from 3g 4g and now 5g in this case as mil sir had also explained that even okay. india play India came out with its own own IT technology called 5G I that was particularly important for rural area where coverage is the important requirement 
and not the very high speed etc so what were the vision given by itu in the year 2015 for 5g so they had uh, talked about three key usage scenario the first one was embb that is enhanced mobile broadband and the second vision was about ur llc that is ultra reliable low latency communication and the last was mmtc that is massive machine type communication so when we say enhanced mobile broadband we are talking about the broadband speed which we get and application around that so embb will be very very important for tourism sector which is very much presence in northeastern states ur llc will support services like autonomous car remote surgery uh, industry 4.0 etc and mmtc is for machines so all the objects machines uh, will have some kind of iot sensors and those sensors will be connected on 5g so that is massive machine type communication so three broad usage scenario itu had envisioned in year 2015 and that is being now rolled out slowly so let us look at various performance parameters of 5g which will enable these use cases first we'll talk about enhanced mobile broadband so the first term which comes for enhanced mobile broadband is the peak data rate how much data rate or peak data rate you can achieve using this technology i was just doing a speed test in this room so for airtel it was half mbps 500 kbps speed for jio it was 3 mbps only so it's a very very less speed even in 4g today that may be because of they have not deployed sufficient spectrum or number of base station or customers are more but theoretically if you talk about 4g will be able to deliver a peak speed of 1 gbps if you deploy all 100 megahertz of a spectrum so our operators are not having that much spectrum for 4g so they were having 20 megahertz only so they actually cannot achieve the vision of 4g but in 5g all the operators have actually acquired sufficient spectrum in the recent auction so they should be able to realize all the vision which itu had so if you look at peak data rate i mean theoretically 20 gbps of download speed one should be able to achieve once sufficient spectrum of 7 800 megahertz is deployed by operators in all their base stations so what does that mean is that if you want to download a particular movie today it may take few hours but with 5g it should take few seconds because of such high data rate and it is 20 times faster than 4g theoretically the 5g technology is 20 times faster than 4g so we should should be able to realize various use cases in this sector using uh, utilizing this particular capability the next important capability of uh, any mobile technology is in spectral efficiency that means if operator is deploying say 1 hertz of frequency how much data rate that can support so for 5g supports 30 bits per second per hertz of the spectral efficiency peak spectral efficiency generally it will be less than that depending upon the environment but theoretically that much so what does this means suppose operator is deploying 100 megahertz on a particular tower so they will be able to achieve 3 gbps of peak speed of course a single user if there is only one user in that base station area he'll get the entire speed if you have more than this will be divided so this is also technologically three times better than 4g so the next parameter is the user experience data rate so everyone will not get the peak data rate so user experience data rate what they define is that even if you go on to edge of a network so normally if you are near, near to the uh, tower you'll get higher speed but what happens when you go beyond the tower so your speed gradually decreases when you reach to the edge so on to edge also one should be able to at least receive 100 megabit per second in case of 5g 
in a downlink direction and half of it in uplink direction so this is also 10 times better than 5g so 5g is supposed to deliver us 10 mbps even onto the edge which is practically not happening because of many reason so uh, and the mobility so one important aspect is the mobility because in our country also we are talking about bullet trains so if you look at 4g it will not support mobile services in a bullet train environment where the bullet train speed can be say up to 500 uh, km per hour but 5g will support the mobile either voice call or data call even in the bullet train technologically that had been enhanced to support working of a phone or data in bullet train also up to 500 km per hour in 4g it was up to 350 km per hour so these are the parameters for enhanced mobile broadband the peak data rate spectral efficiency user experience data rate and mobility so with these features lot of use cases can be developed like uh, augmented reality virtual reality or mixed reality kind of application for tourism in industry for education for entertainment so lot of that i'll talk about in the second session when i'll go through the use cases the next use scenario uh, which was envisioned was urllc ultra reliable low latency communication so what are the key parameters which will enable urllc the first parameter is the latency so latency is suppose i want to transfer some bit of data to you so how much time it takes to reach you is actually latency let me compare this with our eyes if i throw something on you your eyes blinks so can you guess how much time it takes for your eyes to blink it is about 200 to 300 millisecond and the latency supported by 5g is 1 millisecond so just see the comparison that if a person is driving a car whose latency is 250 millisecond and when a autonomous car or machine is driving a car whose latency is 1 millisecond which one will be better collision will be less in which case so going forward when we are able to actually achieve this envision 1 millisecond and implement uh, like autonomous car or self driving car so perhaps a machine driving a car would be more safer compared to a human driving because of the features which we have in 5g so uh, applications of these would be in autonomous car remote surgery or robotics reliability is most important parameter in case of such applications uh, like remote surgery or autonomous car so when we say reliability actually we are talking about uh, if you transmit certain bits of data how much error uh, it may be happening in between in the air interface so for urllc kind of applications uh, 3gpp in their specifications have uh, gone up to 10 to the power minus 6 we call it bit error rate so that means that if i transmit 10 lakhs of bit 1 million of bit only one bit of error can be tolerated so that is a kind of reliability which 5g is bringing uh, these are many times defined in terms of number of 9 so if you convert that 10 to the minus 6 it will come 99.9999% so 69 kind of reliability it will bring to us so reliability and also availability of this level the most one of the most important parameter is the mobility interruption because these applications would be actually moving so you'll be moving from one tower to other tower so normally your call get transferred from one tower to other tower we call it handoff and there may be interruption there so the 5g is designed in a way that uh, before it is broken from the previous tower it will already be connected to the next tower make before you break kind of solution so that there is no interruption because once you have interruption car may collide or doctor doing surgery may do something wrong so this feature is also very very important for 5g 
so urlc we had latency we have reliability and mobility interruption now the third and most important part is mmtc massive machine type communication so as sir was also saying that normally when 2g 3g and 4g was designed human was kept in mind that a human will use his or her mobile to use those services but when 5g was designed it was kept in mind that machines will be using the 5g network so 5g is primarily in addition to the human it is designed for the machines to get connected onto the 5g network that's why we have massive machine type communications where in a very large number of devices for example in this room every object can be connected to a 5g network every machines can be connected and you can install many large number of sensors in the agricultural field or remote area to predict any disaster and all so all those would connect on to the 5g network so 5g network has to support a very very large number of such connectivity so the parameter which 5g is supposed to support is 10 lakh devices in 1 square kilometer so in 1 square kilometer up to 10 lakh devices can get connected to the 5g network so that is a kind of capability which 5g has so there will be a network of these devices so these devices not only connect to the 5g network but will also connect to each other there will be a network of such devices they will be talking to each other so this is the future which will be seeing in coming days and this the one of the important parameter for such network is the energy efficiency so why energy efficiency is important because these sensors would be installed in a remotest part for example just to predict uh, any disaster those sensors will be installed in a very very remote locations on the hills etc and those have to be powered by the battery you may not have power connection there so there is no opportunity that i can go and replace the battery or charge the battery so your battery life has to be 10 years 15 years and those sensors have to work for 10 years and all so the way 5g system are designed so that your battery can last for 10 years 15 years lot of innovation has been done in the today it, i mean after whole day of use our mobile gets discharged right so battery life is uh, only one day and even if you don't use it gets discharged because your device is always talking to the network so uh, just an idea that for iot kind of uh, network the frequency of getting connected on the network for this control signaling is less in the 5g so that your battery life is extended so lot of thought has gone into that so we talked about connection density and energy efficiency for mmtc kind of services so this three uses scenario and performance parameter maybe i can pause for a moment for any question and then i proceed i, I can take one or two questions and then i proceed so anyone having any question on this either from i see almost 70 connection from remote so anyone from remote can also ask or from this august gathering any question okay so let me proceed uh, further so let me talk about uh, a little bit about the 5g architectures and features uh, so that we understand that so this is a very high level 5g systems wherein uh, on the left side we have the devices so earlier when we used to make such diagram we just used to put a mobile phone now this 5g connections will be utilized not only by the mobile phones but also by the machines drones cars iot sensors and so on and of course after that we have we call it radio access network so basically the tower you see across the city or across the rural area or in case of a indoor this kind of antennas these are part of radio access network in case of 5g we call it 
next generation radio access network sometime we also call it g node b this same and then we have a core network so here we have a 5g core network earlier we'll have a 4g core network we used to call that epc evolved packet core and then we have a data network because ultimately you have to get connected to either internet or maybe some service like gaming or air vr service so the data network so data network can be any kind of data network where 5g network will so entire thing is called 5g system so how as sir was explaining that how it is different from 2g 3g and 4g so let us not go into detail of this network function but the broad aspect i'll try to bring out the first pointer is in case of 5g your hardware and software is segregated what it means is that now 5g can be deployed on a generic commercially of the self hardware so the operators are having opportunity that uh, they will have software pieces of software of 5g network function they can deploy on any hardware their own data center or cloud and those network function has become software so that's an opportunity for indian companies that they can actually work upon any of the network function create their own and sell to the operators so that is also a uh, innovative thing which our indian software company uh, have actually started the next is about the edge computing there is a lot of talk about edge computing why edge computing has been enabled in 5g because the way it has been designed the actual data traffic will be offloaded to the application at the edge itself in the city itself and you are not required to take it to the core so today whatever uh, services you use your data goes to the core network maybe in mumbai or maybe in kolkata and from there it is routed either back to this place or to the any services in case of 5g at the edge itself so you will see lot of data centers coming in the tier 2 tier 3 cities to support uh, this kind of edge applications which is possible in 5g and then of course this can be deployed in cloud and uh, these are some technical uh, terms which i will not speak here okay the most important parameter for any mobile technology is the spectrum so we had seen in 2g 3g and 4g for example 2g system was utilizing just a 200 kilohertz of channel bandwidth 3g was using 5 megahertz 4g was using 20 megahertz but in 5g it's a very very bigger jump so it will be utilizing a very huge chunk of spectrum for example and not only uh, so spectrum has got from lower band to mid band to higher band so in 5g all the three segment of the bands will be utilized in fact all the operators have actually acquired the required spectrum and this will be for different use cases so you may be aware that if you have a lower frequency band your coverage can be very very large do you recall am radio that am radio from very very far away we were able to receive because they were operating on a very very low frequency so lower the frequency you will have a very very large coverage so 5g will also operate on lower part of the frequency just to cover the area so that all those sensors can be connected so that rural area can be connected so that uh, any device which is deep into uh, say basement can be connected so all operators during this auction have acquired some sort of lower band also for example jio has acquired band in the 700 megahertz lower part of the band airtel has also acquired they are having spectrum in 900 megahertz band so all operators even in northeast i was just looking at the location in northeast uh, both the operator jio and airtel have actually acquired jio has acquired 7 megahertz in 7 megahertz and uh, airtel in uh, uh, 900 megahertz so in the lower band about 20 megahertz spectrum would be sufficient which operators have actually acquired through the auction and for northeast also they have acquired i was just looking at that so for a larger coverage area you are, you are having a lower band in the cities the capacity requirement is more like for in this room all of us are having 4g phone and actually using 
so we require a very high data rate here so that everyone is able to have a good uh, data rate so all operators if you see have actually acquired mid band that is 3.5 gigahertz of the band and uh, they have acquired around 100 megahertz i was talking about if you have 100 megahertz you can achieve up to 3 gbps of speed so suppose if this particular antenna system is operating on 100 megahertz chunk of spectrum so here it can create a 3 gbps backhaul for all our mobiles so all of us can actually enjoy uh, enhanced mobile broadband so once this 5g gets deployed indoor outdoor we will be able to actually enjoy that kind of so in the cities where capacity is the requirement of course your uh, cell size will be less and you will need to deploy uh, systems uh, we call it small cell or slightly macro coverage on to the 3.5 gigahertz and the last but most important is the millimeter wave why we call it millimeter because i mean if you convert that frequency into wavelength uh, it comes in millimeter so all operators have actually acquired sir 1000 megahertz that is 1 gigahertz spectrum in india including northeast uh, northeast the jio and airtel vodafone has not actually acquired in the northeast as of now so they will be able to actually create hotspot so where hotspot would be required suppose all of us are in this particular room uh, so you can just put an 5g hotspot here so that you can create a multi gigabit Uh, capacity in the room itself and all of us can actually be uh, use that for example we are using using this audio video visual things to transfer with that speed it can even it can go hd or even a 3d kind of environment can be created so all the three three frequency band lower band mid band and millimeter wave 5g will be utilizing in parallel for example if you have a tower here it is a possibility that you you have deployed the lower part of the band mid band and also the millimeter wave at the same place so that different requirements are met coverage capacity and very very high throughput environment in 5g there is a concept of massive mimo and beam forming so up to 4g you might have seen a uh, antenna like this a panel antenna Uh, just tilted downwards onto the tower and it creates a kind of a umbrella coverage around it so whether anybody is using the mobile or not that coverage is there so even if in the night if nobody is using those are kind of a vestiges and radiation is happening in case of 5g there is a concept of beam forming so what is the benefit of that that whenever you want to actually use data at that time transmission is pointed towards you the beam is pointed towards you and you are able to use the data so your spectral efficiency is increased your radiation level is decreased and one important aspect is you can form a beam upwards in 4g since it was only covering the down side of the antenna in 5g with beam forming suppose there is a high rise building yeah you can just see in this picture you are able to cover on the upper floors also using this particular beam forming uh, concept and why it has become possible because of many factor the one factor is since we are using higher side of frequency band and if you use higher side of frequency band my antenna size reduces in case of a millimeter wave antenna size will be in millimeter itself right so i can embed thousand of antenna into one small panel you can just see there and steer those uh, in a way that i can form beam and that beam can also be steered in the sense that if you are in a moving car beam will follow you right and then it will hand over to the next such base station so that is a concept of beam forming which is beam steering which is being enabled so this will be important for say v2x kind of application like if there is an autonomous car it has to talk to all other car around red light and also talk to the network so maybe on every pole you are having small cell and this a uh, beam kind of environment and when your car is moving the car will have a good connectivity and those autonomous car can actually be working so it's very important now the next technology which 5g supports we call it network slicing so basically as we discussed that 5g can actually support 
many many type of use cases and for used each use case you have a separate requirement right for example if it is a moving car kind of environment your latency is very very important so ur llc kind of a feature is very very important suppose you are using 5g for your smart meter kind of application so where the requirement is of coverage right so that you are able to cover each household where meter installed you may not need a very high throughput right so all applications requires different set of quality of service so in 5g we are able to virtually divide into the network in different parts and support different quality of service required so we call it uh, network slicing so for normal voice call i can have a separate slice of the network for uh, autonomous car i can have a separate slice for smart meter a kind of application i can have a separate slice if i have ar vr gaming service i can have a separate slice so that required quality of service is delivered on to those slices and accordingly service can be differentiated and this has become possible all because the architecture of 5g which has allowed the cloud deployment of software deployment of such technologies so we were talking about edge computing uh, and i was also talking about how this is going to enable lot of innovation in the tier 2 tier 3 cities so in 5g what has happened we call it user plane so the data traffic where it flows so earlier it used to go to the core and then come back now you are offloading that into the edge itself in the city itself because 5g has enabled that so that means in a tier 2 tier 3 city where you have a small data center enable so not only 5g network will will be residing there the edge part of it also the applications like gaming or local application game application related to agriculture application related to ar vr service application related to education in that area that can actually reside at the edge itself what else edge will enable is today our mobile phones are very very heavy in terms of compute and memory all because most of the processing of applications are being done in our devices with edge computing this compute and storage can move to the edge so you will so your i mean it will very very uh, light phone will start coming with at less cost and you'll have more facilities or more uh, powerful uses because the whole compute most of the compute and memory can be shifted to the edge itself so that's the advantage of mobile edge computing which uh, 5g has actually enabled Uh, sir was talking about open ran so basically sir explained that 70 80% the cost goes on to bta so the tower whatever equipment uh, we put on to the tower or uh, nowadays we have a split architecture so basically when we say open ran so what has become is that those uh, base station can be deployed on a off the self hardware any compute uh, which you can buy from the market and so that has enabled development of these elements by a small small startup companies in india and across the world so a lot of ecosystem has actually developed around uh, uh, this open ran segment and those 70% capex where operators are actually spending that is going to be uh, reduced to a very very large extent once this ecosystem grows all because hardware and software has been uh, disaggregated an interface between the two elements has been made open that means one element you can buy from one company other element you can buy from the next company so that there will be more competition so for example for jio they can buy some equipment from uh, say nokia some equipment from ericsson and some their own they have developed they can actually use so that enablement has been made with open ran concept which is coming along with 5g so uh, these were the very very option one of the important aspect is use of artificial intelligence and machine learning in the radio network itself the open ran architecture has enabled so all those mobility management i was talking about hand off from one tower to other or quality of service which i was talking about those management from manual it can be automatic using ai ml concept
uh, we were talking about millimeter wave so and millimeter wave as we know that it's a very very high frequency it will cover a very small area but it will give you very very high capacity maybe uh, uh, 10 gbps 5 gbps depending upon how much spectrum you are uh, uh, deploying so these we call it small cell because coverage is small capacity is more so here is a uh, kind of on electric pole this kind of antennas will go let's see this so these are having massive number of antenna embedded so on electric pole bus shelter uh, all public kind of places we have to put even inside a, a, a kind of house or office premises so basically a dense network of small cell will be created which is a challenge because uh, you need permission from the local uh, uh, organizations like municipal corporation state government other department so we call it street furniture sir was talking about that so every street furniture some kind of 5g network has to uh, come up and we also need some backhaul either fiber or radio to connect this sir was talking about e band radio so that dot has already open up and operators will actually deploy in addition operators are actually required to put in fiber also wherever it is feasible so the policy enablement has already been done by dot in respect of uh, right of way kind of uh, new regulation which has come but since these are state subject so every state i think friends from most of north state uh, states are here so they can look at what dot has issued and perhaps adopt in their state so that whenever uh, operators are coming to you for right of way permission we are able to actually give that in a very very faster way and on uh, nominal cost which dot has indicated because it should not be made like money minting business by the government or those entity because 5g itself will bring in so much of the benefit to the society and states in the country that whatever enablement will do return on that will uh, will definitely come so that's a request to all the state government here sir was talking about uh, uh, satellite so basically if you look at this is future so this is being talked about in release 17 and release 18 so as of now 3gpp has done release 15 and 16 so all the equipment which our operators are actually deploying are either release 15 compliant or release 16 so jio i know that they are on release 16 everyone will go towards that but going forward for areas like northwest how to uh, provide backhaul to the 5g sites so normally backhaul is either fiber or a radio right so in a remote area that's a challenge so whether satellite can uh, play a role so up till now what used to happen is satellite industry is completely separate and mobile industry is completely uh, separate so they don't talk to each other technically right so they provide their own service we provide our own service so in 5g uh, 3gpp release 17 and 18 now integration of satellite into the 5g network itself is being talked about so what are the different purposes where 5g can help proliferate uh, sorry satellite can help pro proliferate 5g the first is 5g services in the area which is unserved or underserved for example if you go to a very far away remote village where you don't have any backhaul you cannot actually deploy a any kind of mobile network because of the backhaul so their satellite will uh, come into picture that can provide backhaul to the 5g network so that is unserved or underserved area the second is the 5g service continuity for example you are using a 5g or 4g service but suppose you go on to aeroplane so your service is discontinued for the time you are into the aeroplane so can my 5g service continue even on to the airplane yes so technically that work is uh, in progress and uh, it will be possible that uh, the service continuity in ships in aeroplanes or any other moving platform will actually continue the third use case is on multicast broadcast so i was talking about lot of content will come onto the edge network which 5g is enabling 
So one way is to bring the edge data using the 5G network itself. The other method possible would be in future that at least the broadcast kind of data can go on to the edge through satellite so that your mobile network is offloaded and you are able to support more services on the 5G terrestrial network. So that is the enablement which 5G actually can do. So either those multicast broadcast can go up to the edge or to a node or even to the direct to the device. That is also a possibility. A lot of research are going and perhaps in two, three years time, this will become a reality. So what are different use cases which I talked about uh, will be served? So EMBB, of course, enhanced mobile broadband, of course, satellite will help us. MMTC, that is sensor network. As we know that sensor network will mostly be in the remote areas in the agricultural field. And many a times you may not have terrestrial coverage. So their satellite can actually play a role. Not only that, suppose there are sensors installed in a logistic container, which is being transported from say one country to other country, right? So, so those sensors are actually connected initially to the mobile network or 5G network in a terrestrial way. But once it goes to say in a SIP, same container is transported in a SIP, so you don't have terrestrial coverage. At that time, it will connect to the satellite because of the service continuity, which we talked about. Again, in the other country, it will go to a land network. So there again, it will connect to the terrestrial network. So that kind of IoT sensor, that, that's an example I explained, which is also given in the standard document. And third is the public safety, which is very important. If some disaster occurs, no, our telecom services, our fiber, power, everything goes away. So you don't have coverage. But in case we plan satellite backhaul in critical places, so at least some kind of connectivity we can continue even in 5G. So once this integration is happening, so this all will be seamless. Today also we are able to do, for example, uh, when there was a disaster in Leh, we were able to connect our that time WLL CDMA network on uh, VSAT, right? But very less capacity because VSAT itself is a less capacity. So, but with 5G now uh, low orbit satellite, that will be, I mean, you can have audio, video, data kind of services enabled. So this is what is happening uh, in coming days. This is some kind of future. So this we uh, talked about. So satellite can be used as a backhaul, as I said. Pardon? So it's uh, the um, I have two presentations. First is going to finish, sir. Uh, so first one is going to uh, finish, sir. Yes, sir. So as I said, satellite can work as a backhaul for 5G. And second, just look at this picture. Satellite can actually work as our radio access network. The tower which we have here can actually satellite take that load. So one in a way that it works as a transparent pipe wherein your uh, base station traffic goes on to the satellite and then transmitted to the users. So that is a concept. And the second one is that it actually acting as a base station completely, right? So you are having a satellite network and then that is acting as a BTS, kind of a high, uh, I mean, high platform BTS kind of, right? So that is also a possibility which has been talked in the standards. Of course, it will take certain years to uh, come, but the whole satellite industry and 3GPP is working on this and some trials are going on. So this will become reality. So the problem of the Northeast, the 5G will definitely solve after few releases uh, gets mature. So this is a typical uh, 5G network uh, which will be coexisting with 4G. Uh, network where we will have uh, edge computing here it is shown as a local server some compute will happen at the central server we will have small cell on the street lights etc you can see uh, below uh, pictures you will have a macro coverage beam forming concept and also the 4g coverage so this will be a typical uh, a 5g network which all operators will be deploying and it will look like that so with this perhaps i can open it for questions sir if anyone is having any question, I'll try to answer before I move to the next uh, set of presentation.
right so now the most important part is on the use cases itself that uh, the potential use cases which we talked about uh, some how uh, these can actually convert into uh, real use cases some of the use cases which was so cased in india mobile congress uh, this month for second and third i have tried to capture that also so that will give you a glimpse that how our uh, enterprises smes and operators have actually developed so the so some uh, use cases related to enhanced mobile broadband you can see on the screen are like video telepresence or uh, video streaming so for example today the tv fellows uh, they come with a big vehicle with a satellite antenna for actually uh, transmitting signal live but once 5g is there that kind of speed they can actually get onto the terrestrial network so they will not require to bring such a bigger device through a very very small form factor device they'll be able to stream the data and then of course the virtual reality which will be a use case for education entertainment uh, gaming even the tourism will be uh, uh, coming and uh, the conditions like uh, a stadium where lakhs of people are actually witnessing live match everyone is taking picture etc so they are with uh, a small cell concept few numbers of small cell which will be giving you very very high uh, speed everyone can actually uh, enjoy uh, uh, their devices right sir right correct correct yeah yeah so this live streaming will literally get and and not only that sir lot of other application will be developed around it one is like uh, holographic uh, transmission of the signal so you might have seen sir our prime minister while launching 5g he talked to a small school girl so the girl appeared kind of a live onto the stage where prime minister was there and prime minister talked to that girl so kind of a holographics for example i could have done this presentation from delhi and it will feel to you that i'm sitting here and explaining that so that kind of environment can be created but of course it will not only 5g but associated technology 5g will give you a good kind of connectivity latency etc rest so but it's a combination of few industry which will create such uh, use cases now the urllc that is ultra reliable low latency communication which i spoke in the first session these are certain use cases so one is of course the autonomous vehicle uh, uh, which can drive itself it talks to all the nearby uh, cars it also talks to the poles there red light there and also take various pictures so and at the back end some ai ml algorithm runs so in future uh, the vehicle will become autonomous robotics is the other example in the industry that you can control the robots from your office and all those uh, in the factory uh, which is in different environment hot environment or hazard environment you can actually do it aviation drone we know and industrial automation we talked about so these uh, will enable this urllc kind of feature of 5g and massive machine type you talked about that uh, in india also we are having lot of smart cities where we of course are using iot but on various uh, small small technologies lora van and so on and so forth ultimately when 5g proliferate everyone will be using the 5g connectivity smart home where all our appliances would actually be connected and we can do lot many things and remote sensors actuators and our uh, wearable devices will also connect to the 5g network directly and a lot of thing will happen sir so uh, let us look at uh, sector wise that which sector uh, what kind of possible solution may come so let us start with uh, public safety so public safety is a very very important function of uh the state and central government so it's very important the first is i was talking about if i have a connected sensors so suppose i am able to deploy these sensors in a remote areas and it is able to warn about the disaster in some advance maybe few hours in advance 
so perhaps we can take certain action and reduce loss of property or reduce loss of human right in that disaster so that is very very key and why 5g because 5g can provide a coverage using the lower frequency band and it can support large number of such devices second is the drone sir so drone is is coming to be very very important and today also we have drone but 5g connected drones means you can fly the drone even in the area where there is no line of sight because you may have 5g coverage and you can also take pictures video uh, send it to the back end and from there some Uh, uh, uh some help can come or some doctor can directly talk to uh, the patient using the connectivity which our drone may have and so on so emergency response will actually improve with 5g kind of a drone and of course remote consulting by doctors would be possible uh, once we have uh, such connection and then we talked about connected vehicle which will actually avoid road collisions and lot of data will also come to uh, the traffic management and all so lot of uh, improvement can be done so there are many use cases so uh, as sir was talking about uh, uh, private 5g so lot of uh, things are going on uh, related to private 5g we had visited iit delhi so they have developed the entire 5g network in a box because of the virtualization concept which we have the entire 5g has been created in a box i have taken a small video i would like to just uh, show you so in this picture what you see is uh, this is a big kind of environment and this one is they have in this box they have created a complete 4g network and the other box is ultimate and they have a coverage in that particular area so uh, and there are certain other uh, companies also who have done complete 5g network in a box in a sense that you can deploy even your in your laptop and connect a radiating element and you can cover an area so what are the different use cases of this the first use case is uh, generally what we see that in case of disaster connectivity goes away even those responders are not able to talk to each other properly or even if they have a walkie talkie system only voice things they are able to talk to this kind of device can be kept on back of a person a network can be created in that area with that and maybe responders can talk to each other similarly uh, in respect of security our armed forces many a times they actually venture into uh, dangerous area so they can one of the the army fellow can take the entire network on his back and other fellows are having some kind of receiver and transmitter they can create a network local network for that time they can talk to each other coordinate so lot of use cases of such uh, 5g in a box can come and for uh, offices like us i we could have deployed in one of the server here a private 5g and created a uh, campus wide private 5g network with such solution so there are many startup also like neural network is one startup who has done this uh, uh, small setup of private 5g network and they have uh, there are many sir who has come even dot has supported these guys so this is an opportunity even for northeast area wherever we need to create such kind of setup and government has actually enabled in the sense that such kind of network you can request from a tsp telecom service provider or you can even request from a third party wherein you can take spectrum either directly from the dot or lease from the tsp so a lot of options has been given in policy by the dot so enablement part has already been done perhaps this will take off in a very fast way so uh, the one is that we know that drones are already there in the market many companies are actually making drone but what about 5g enabled drone so basically if you look at innovators so in in the field of 5g qualcomm is one of the innovator we know that all our mobiles are having the 5g chipset snapdragon which is from qualcomm other chipset vendor is mediatek so only two three so qualcomm has actually developed the drone platform which you can embed in any drone and it will become 5g drone so uh, i'll just show a small video which they have promoted on their website uh, 
Spotlight RB5 5G platform. The world's first 5G and AI drone platform, offering powerful and efficient heterogeneous computing, designed to meet the various drone applications and use cases around the world. From aerial inspections of infrastructure, agriculture, and assets, to the filming of cinematic visuals for entertainment, to delivering packages and mission-critical tasks like first response. The Qualcomm Flight RB5 5G platform lays the foundation for your purpose-built drone and is designed to help your industry take flight. So I see very good application of such drones platform. So in any drone which you buy from the market, this can be embedded. So a lot of industry will come up and actually develop application around it. For example, today, in Gujarat, I mean, farmers are using drone to uh, spray the pesticide. So those are line of sight drone. With 5G, that will become kind of even in a farther places, they'll be able to utilize uh, in a better way. And even Qualcomm has given a cost of this platform. It is less than uh, 4,200 US dollar on their website. So any small company or SME, suppose in Northeast, if they want to develop some application using 5G and drone, they can actually, uh, these are commercially available products. They can buy drone, they can buy this platform, embed it and uh, create some applications. It's a very good opportunity for them. So let us look at agriculture uh, sector, how uh, 5G connected uh, agriculture uh, sensors would actually help. So today also in many area, we use IoT devices in the agriculture field uh, that will actually improve. So, so this picture which you see is kind of a field where we have deployed say 5G uh, connected sensors, sensors which can actually sense humidity, temperature, soil moisture, etc. Uh, they are directly being connected to 5G network. Similarly, autonomous vehicles like drone or autonomous vehicles are getting connected to uh, the 5G network, they are collecting data from the various sensors which is there in the field. At the back end, uh, I mean, some program will run which our SME have to actually develop or some applications are already there in the market so that you know that in which area you require irrigation, in which area you may require some kind, what kind of pesticide is to be put, in which area your fruit has ripened and you need to pluck it. So all those analyses can be done in the backend using some kind of AI ML, and then you can uh, uh, use this particular technology. So in India Mobile Congress, the Airtel, LNT, CDAC, they had, I mean, they actually were showcasing one use case of automated irrigation. So in this picture, what you see, that they have put sensors which can sense moisture in the soil and they know that this particular plant uh, what should be the humidity level into the uh, those soils so those data is being captured right online and going to a controller and controller is deciding how much water to be irrigated automatically for how much time depending upon the data which is being received so here role of 5g is your uh, collecting the data from the field, large field onto the 5G network, sending it to the controller or the central system, and then back to the command that some has to be switched on, some has to be switched off. So you can go up to a plant level because those uh, water droplets can actually be planned up to the plant level that a particular plant, how much water to be dropped. So this is also a small video taken in the IMC itself that will, uh, uh, I mean, the, the person himself is telling, just have a look. This is the ground in the ground. Yes, this is the ground in the ground, but this is the ground in the ground. I will talk about the atmospheric sensor. They are deciding that there is water here. Yes, now there is water here. So, if you put water here, it will be water here. This solution is in two ways. Automatic and manual. So, if you want to put it in automatic mode, it will be left. When the water will be water, the water will come. When it will not be water, it will be closed. When it will be closed, 
so this was uh, one of the use case which was getting demonstrated in uh, imc so uh, so basically this is very useful once we have a 5g uh, coverage all across uh, such applications can be uh, deployed so the next is uh, how the drones will help agriculture so here i mean in this picture what you see that the drone is a 5g, 5G capable drone wherein it also has multiple cameras which is taking picture of a say grassland or agriculture field so in this example it is trying to find out uh, the pastures or the weeds which are uh, present in the uh, the farm field so that targeted pesticide can be applied in the next picture uh, uh, the drone is taking picture uh, kind of a plant level data it is uh, trying to take and these will go to the back end server where they will analyze for example of the field which i talked about they will they are able to analyze and see that where all those weeds are there docks are there where actually uh, they require to put the pesticide generally uh, what we do is we spray pesticide all across the field whether required or not required but with this kind of environment you can do a pesticide uh, spray targeted to those weeds where it is required and or maybe a section of for example if in a field you have identified a particular section where requirement of pesticide is there so drone can spray uh, that uh, particular kind of pesticide or fertilizer for that matter in that area so this is uh, another kind of application which 5g connectivity can bring in so what we have for agriculture you can even monitor the livestock or track them or irrigation management you can do or machinery tracking you can do so vehicle monitoring since we are able to deploy sensors in every object every machine uh, etc so you are able to monitor them and uh, use the services so it's a combination of technology that is communication technology iot kind of technology and other back end uh, services which our smes and startup would be working and there are some commercial product already available now the next big thing is on experience education entertainment and this will also cover tourism so i'll just uh, give one example of innovation which is taking place in this uh, by various companies even geo has developed uh, geo glass uh, i think our geo person will know so this kind of glass is being developed so this particular glass will connect to 5g network directly and then uh, will connect to the edge mobile edge computing where uh, various uh, services would be installed so these glasses will have 8k up to 8k uh, 360 degree video kind of so if you move your head left and right uh, entire environment because it may have multiple camera is being sensed and a, a virtual environment would get created so what are the use cases of such glasses for example if uh, in this picture what you see that a mechanic with this glass has come to a place where he has to repair something so with this glass he is able to visualize the machine problem or maybe he is getting some kind of guided instruction from a automated system or from a human at sitting at remote and he can actually repair or wherever he need a specialized uh, guidance he can actually take with such glasses the next is the telepresence we talked about that uh, uh, in some scenario if you need physical presence of that person in a virtual environment with holographic kind of applications that would be uh, possible even the meetings can happen uh, in a telepresence and the metaverse talk which is there in the market is nothing but creating a virtual environment where everyone can virtually go sit across and do the day to day activities with such kind of glasses and then uh, we all are aware about assistant which you have in our apple phone or google phone or for that matter laptop so with such glasses this will become a kind of xr assistant augmented reality assistant in this example what is shown is that a a, a chef is coming in front of a person who is trying to cook something 
and explaining how to do that so this is also important for say education the teacher sitting at remote can actually appear in front of the student if a student is wearing some sort of glass and explain the concept uh, in a very very immersive way so these are the application which will really work in india uh, autonomous car we don't know because of our road conditions but this kind of application will really going to help us uh, similarly the social experience today i mean most of the young population use all kind of facebook twitter etc so i mean the experience which are they are getting is like uh, kind of a 2d experience but in this example what is being shown as that a physical environment suppose there is a stadium if you wear a glass some fellows are there physically and somebody just wearing glass at their, their home and they'll feel that they are at that virtual environment they can dance together they can uh, talk together and also that kind of environment in the entertainment education and tourism sector is uh, going to uh, be expanded very fast perhaps in india i see a very uh, good opportunity here like gaming also today the gaming industry is actually increasing in a very very large way so one example here which i'm trying to say that this particular boy is wearing a glass and roaming around the home and playing a game so what this glass is doing because it has got seven eight cameras <coughs> it is able to scan the entire room and create a virtual environment for him like this so he is actually sitting on his own bed but to him it is appearing that bed is like this room walls are like that that <clears throat> why it is possible because from the camera room get map gone to the edge computing and from there data is coming which he is visualizing it's a combination of virtual data and actual place where he is and he can actually he is playing some kind of a game if you see like this object is coming and going and his uh, i mean some kind of game depiction is there you can imagine many kind of gaming and even the education content uh, can be actually delivered so these are the applications which in us uh, this qualcom and other companies are actually working on and those will become reality in upcoming uh, days on 5g so so this was for experience education so basically our ar vr or xr which is even today we have but that will improve the way i explain Uh, even the sensory experience like touch etc can be brought in in future then immersive teaching would be possible immersive virtual meeting would be possible live concert those uh, i explained now coming to the health sector so this is very important in imc the india mobile congress uh, aatel and also jio uh, uh, were so casing uh, some kind of 5g connected ambulance so in that they were having lot many devices but it was connected to the hospital in the sense that uh, as soon as a patient is brought in to the ambulance he starts getting support from the hospital because we say that first one hour is very important for a patient uh, maybe in accident or otherwise uh, to save his life so his treatment starts as soon as he is put onto the ambulance itself because of the Uh, low latency kind of high speed uh, connection which he is getting uh, uh, with the doctor and doctor is able to guide the nurse or the person in the ambulance and some kind of treatment get started uh, then and there itself so one more uh, so was there sir was also talking about embu pod so there is one company small company they have created entire setup of basic life saving and advanced life saving vls ls they call it uh, equipments onto a uh, three wheeler right they are calling it as embu pod so these are the test which are possible i'll just show you and this was uh, being so cast in imc i have captured one video from somewhere which was from the imc i had also visited i just have a look at it अब मेरे सामने आप ये जो ऑटो देख रहे हैं कोई नॉर्मल ऑटो नहीं है और ना ही ये केवल यहाँ पर शोपीस बन के खड़ा है दरअसल ये है एयरटेल की चलती फिरती एम्बू पॉट यानी कि चलता फिरता एक मिनी एम्बुलेंस जो कि आपके छोटे से छोटे शहर गांव कस्बे में आसानी से चला जाएगा 
और आपके टेस्ट सभी तरह के मेडिकल टेस्ट आसानी से कर देगा 5G से पूरा कनेक्टेड है डॉक्टर आपको लाइव वीडियो पर देख रहा होगा हॉस्पिटल में बैठा हो किसी बड़े शहर में और कई सारी इसमें और फैसिलिटीज़ हैं तो आइए आपको इस चलती फिरती एम्बू पॉट के अंदर लेके चलता हूँ यहाँ पर मुझे एक ई कराने का ऑप्शन मिल चुका है और आपको बता दूँ कि ये छोटी सी कॉम्पैक्ट एम्बुलेंस है बहुत ही फ़ायदेमंद है बेसिकली ये मेरा यहाँ पर ई हो रहा है जो भी ई होगा वो इस टैबलेट में जाएगा और इनके टैप कनेक्शन के थ्रू उस स्क्रीन में जाएगा और उस स्क्रीन के थ्रू डायरेक्टली जो डॉक्टर हॉस्पिटल में बैठे हैं वो देख पाएंगे कि जो पेशेंट है उसका ईसीजी कैसा है तो बाई किसी को स्ट्रोक आया है तो डायरेक्टली उसका इलाज एम्बुलेंस के अंदर भी हो सकता है आई होप आपको समझ आएगा होगा फाइव जी के कितने फायदे होने वाले हैं सो सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल दिस एम्बू पॉट गोज टू ए रूरल एरिया एंड रूरल एरिया द एम्बू मैनेजर हु इज नॉट ए डॉक्टर कैन एक्चुअली आई मीन टेक केयर ऑफ द पेशेंट देयर एंड द डॉक्टर इन द रिमोट एरिया कैन एक्चुअली हेल्प so this is another short video created by embu pod fellows very small one just see this so this embu pod manager is going to take a certain test video so this example they are going to a video so this is the treatment of the using whatever for for डॉक्टर स्पोर्टेड बाई companies like airtel and all so going forward it may become a kind of a very very remote and remote and what of innovation that the person of the company has done there are uh, opportunities that we need to many the beginning of our area but this device is that that already is So now let's talk about industry. So industry, lot of use cases because sir talked about that. Now each and so today also lot of automations are there in the uh, industry wherein those sensors are connected onto the wired network. So what difference which is coming is that now those sensors can be connected onto the wireless network so that you can move the equipment here and there and still it will be working. So all those chaos of wire will get uh, eliminated. so one of the use case we call it digital replica so sub, those devices will have lot of sensors to measure temperature speed uh, pressure so many sensors would be there so you'll be able to actually create a virtual uh, replica of that equipment in a live online environment so suppose some fault is about to occur suppose it is hitting too much beyond the limit so you know in advance that a particular device or part is actually heating can replace in advance so digital replica can actually for example let us look at our car 
so car has so many parts and so many sensors are already uh, placed by these guys so if those all sensors are giving data to a central system you can create that car virtually somewhere else and see that what is not uh, going right and you can take advance uh, advance action or you can inform to driver so digital replica is one which is important secondly as i said that every object every part will have some kind of sensor so you will be able to trace all those raw material be it in a basement be it at any self and with a agv kind of application or automated guided vehicle you can take out those parts for your manufacturing and also so industry autonomy i mean uh, automation making it automatic will be very very useful with such wireless uh, kind of a network and of course we talked about robots etc being controlled from a remote place or working in a risky environment so this was a use case of industry i think i have covered sir in the second part so now i have covered both the parts in case anyone having any question i'll try to answer